What the House has just done is unprecedented. Right no, no, now, the no, House the has resolved— The manager of opposition business, no, we're not going to go over— No, but it goes to exactly what he's just pointed to. No, he he just voted that we'll never find out if someone's right. The manager of opposition business will resume voted. his seat. The manager of opposition business will resume his seat. The, the, mem the member for McKellar— There is a lot to unpack in this video, and we'll come back to that clip. But I want to start with this press conference from Scott Morrison. In relation to Minister Porter, over the course of the last few days and in the discussions that we have had, uh, the inability for him to be able to practically provide further information because of the nature of those arrangements, if he were able to do that, that would allow Minister Porter to conclusively rule out a perceived conflict. He has, this afternoon, taken the appropriate course of action to uphold those standards by tendering his resignation as a minister this afternoon. And minister Porter will be returning to the back bench where he will continue to serve as the member for Pearce. It's a blind trust. He cannot disclose to me um, who those donors are. Do you know how much money he was paid? Before I show you what answer Scott Morrison actually gave, let's find out for ourselves. In March of 2021, Christian Porter, while he was the Attorney General of Australia, sued the ABC for defamation. The defamation lawsuit was because the ABC published this article, which was later found to be about Christian Porter. And that is that nothing in the allegations that have been printed ever happened. This video isn't about the defamation case itself, although that would be a really interesting series that I hope to do. But the ABC said that they would run what's called a truth defence. If you're being sued for defamation, a defence you can use is showing that you told the truth. And that is what the ABC was going to do, and apparently they were going to call 15 witnesses. Christian Porter tried to do everything he could to get the court to disqualify this truth defence, but it didn't look like he was going to succeed. And in no time at all after that, Christian Porter discontinued the case. The parties settled, the ABC paid no damages and made no apologies. And the article that started it all is still online today with a statement of regret. But the point of this video isn't the case. It's that Christian Porter, having hired top defamation barristers, racked up a massive legal bill. And in September 2021, it was revealed that a blind trust paid part of his legal fees, apparently up to a million dollars. What a blind trust means here is that unknown people or entities gave money to a trust called the Legal Services Trust, which then funded part of Christian Porter's personal legal bills. He has refused to provide any details about the trust or the source of the money. Now normally, politicians need to update what's called the Register of Interests with conflicts so that the public knows what's going on in the background. If a politician gets a million dollars from someone, there is a potential conflict that they could then be swayed in their political decision making. That's why there's a register, so everyone can see these conflicts. The register is available online and anyone can go on and search any politician's disclosures. Now there are rules around what should go on the register, and relevant here is the threshold where disclosure is required if a gift of over $300 is received by a politician. The problem with a blind trust is clear. Because now the public doesn't know who has given large sums of money to Christian Porter and how much they've given. What if it's persons or entities with bad intentions? What if it's a foreign country? A quick disclaimer given Porter is quick to sue and I don't have a million dollars lying around. I'm not saying this is what's happened to Porter specifically, but the fact that this kind of arrangement is allowed means it can't be ruled out. So what did Christian Porter actually disclose? A lot of words explaining the background of his defamation case, but not many words about who donated, and definitely no amounts disclosed. So back to Scott Morrison. Do you know how much money he was paid? Um, that's included in his register of interest. And in addition to his lie, his response to this whole thing was washing his hands of the issue. Well, he resigned from cabinet and now he's on the backbench, so it's not my problem. Well, there's, he is no longer a minister. So the matters regarding ministerial standards uh, have been concluded. 
One of your well, what Mr Porter does now is a matter for him. He's not a member of my cabinet. And no, no, the, the mem me people of Pierce. He's a member of parliament. He's a member of your government. He, he's a member of parliament and a member of the Liberal Party. And uh, like I'm the member for Cook, and ultimately to sit in the parliament, then it is up to me um, to maintain my faith with the people of Cook. This is the Prime Minister talking, the leader of the Liberal Party. It's just not good enough. To make matters worse, the government then started doing everything they could to avoid any further scrutiny over these donations. The Labour Party tried to have Parliament refer the matter to what's called the Privileges Committee for investigation. The Privileges Committee is basically a collection of Liberal and Labour politicians who consider, amongst other things, specific complaints about registering or declaring interests. This is what happened when it all played out on the 20th of October, 2021. You had the Speaker of the House, Tony Smith, make a statement that he believed there is a reason for further investigation, what he calls a prima facie case. Based on my careful consideration of all of the information available to me, I am satisfied that a prima facie case has been made out and I'm willing to give precedence to a motion concerning privilege or contempt as raised by the Manager of Opposition Business referring the matter to the Committee of Privileges and Members' Interests. So he says that he is supportive of the case being referred to the Privileges Committee. So then the Parliament had a debate, and the Manager of Opposition Business, Tony Burke, and the Opposition Leader, Anthony Albanese, explained why they supported the matter being referred. On this occasion we are dealing with something that, if it is allowed to stand, if you are allowed to do this, we may as well not have a register of me members' interests at all. Like the term blind trust is being used. This is a brown paper bag stitched together by lawyers. We have no idea whose money is involved. Now think about it. Think about the purpose of having a register. The whole reason it's there is so the public know if a member of parliament gets money the public have a right to know where that money has come from. Since Federation. Since Federation, no member of parliament has tried this. That you can receive income and not let anyone know who was paying. If we're not going to refer the member for Pearce, think about what's then allowed. Any member of this House can then set up a blind trust and have whatever income they want go into it, receive the money, and all they have to say is, oh, I got it from the trust. I don't know who. Don't know where the money came from. Now, if we start with a principle that disclosure is there to avoid corruption, that the disclosure, the register is there to avoid corruption, that we want to avoid conflicts of interest to avoid corruption, then we need to oppose a system where members of parliament can keep secret who is giving them money for personal bills. You can see here how much the Liberals care about this issue. Nice. If this resolution is not carried, then anyone can receive money from unknown sources into a so-called blind trust and never declare it. It renders all the things, including foreign donations and interference. Don't ever, you know, don't come in here and talk about national security again if you, if you don't vote for this resolution, because you won't be taken seriously. Because this, this opens it all up to foreign interference in our politics. It opens it all up for corporate interests or individual interests to buy influence in this parliament without anyone knowing. Peter Dutton then gets up and passive-aggressively tries to divert the issue and justify why the government won't be supporting the motion. Well, I can give, uh, I can give the, the examples, and I, I intend to. Uh, for example, Mr Speaker, um, the same transparency issues raised by uh, uh, by the member for Watson, 
uh, a rise in circumstances of GoFundMe pages mm. where there is no transparency about the donors, mm. no transparency whatsoever. Mm. Senator Hanson Young, for example, uh, and it's a very interesting study uh, in relation to Senator Hanson Young, which goes to exactly the points being made by the member for Watson about transparency in this issue. I'm glad Dutton brought up the Senator Hanson Young donations. Despite him saying that it raises the exact same transparency issues, it in fact couldn't be further from Christian Porter's arrangements. A few years ago, Senator Hanson Young successfully sued another politician for defamation. She set up a GoFundMe page and raised $62,000 from a number of small donations. Most of the donations were under $20 with only eight being above the $300 disclosure threshold, and the highest being $1,000. Hardly a comparison to a million dollars secretly donated to a trust. Taking a closer look, we can see Senator Hanson Young's disclosures in the Register of Interests. See if you agree with Peter Dutton that this raises exactly the same transparency issues as Christian Porter's blind trust. It's not perfect, but there is hardly a risk of conflict with such small donations. It's also all done in the public sphere through a public website. But back to Peter Dutton. Will the government support the motion? The government will be opposing it. Yeah, yeah. And so with that, a division is required. Parliamentary speak for a formal vote. And here is the hero of the day and his sidekicks strolling in to put another nail in the integrity of Parliament. They didn't even bother to be in the room and listen to the debate. The result of the division is ayes 52, noes 49. The question is therefore resolved in the affirmative. The vote resulted in the referral being defeated, meaning that the House of Representatives won't be requiring the Privileges Committee to investigate Christian Porter. Business on the point of order. On the point of order. What the House has just done is unprecedented. Right no, no, now, the no, House the has resolved... The manager of opposition business, no, we're not going to go over... No, because it goes to exactly what he's just pointed to. No, he he just voted that we'll never find out if someone's The manager bright. of opposition business That's will resume voted. his seat. The manager of opposition business will resume his seat. The, the, mem the member for McKellar... Now, if you're wondering why Labor is so annoyed, this was the first time since Federation, 120 years, that a government has voted down a motion like this that the Speaker of the House has supported. But it doesn't end there. That's not the only way the government ensured the motion would fail. Independent MPs who were only able to vote remotely had their votes refused by Peter Dutton. Every other business or organisation around Australia has managed to operate online for things like this. But for some reason, the House of Representatives has this pointless rule in place. But it sure suits the Morrison government. So the referral failed, but the Privileges Committee still received complaints directly from Labor members and decided to investigate anyway. This meant that they published a report which was 14 pages long, meaning surely there's something of value in there. Except, once you take out the title page, three blank pages, copyright info, three pages of general information, the table of contents and a three-page appendix, you are left with less than two pages of actual content. The committee concluded that the declaration by Christian Porter was consistent with his obligations. And as the current arrangements are inadequate, the committee considers that additional detail within the requirements of the register would assist members in meeting the expectations of the House. And that's it. Apparently what happened was completely within the rules. The only conclusion was a vague statement about the guidance needing to be updated. No details about what the proposed changes are or where the shortcomings might be. Nothing. But I'm not surprised. Politicians cannot police themselves. So once all is said and done, what is the actual point of a register of interests? It's just a charade. We are meant to have a system in place that alerts the public to any conflicts actual or potential, so we can consider whether politicians are taking their constituents' interests seriously. And what if Christian Porter hadn't declared this arrangement at all? No one would have known of its existence. This is why we need a proper federal anti-corruption body. 
And from everything we've seen from the Liberal government in this saga alone, it's pretty obvious they aren't the right party to set one up. Porter's blind trust is an insult to disclosure rules, and now any bad actor knows how to buy up our politicians without anyone knowing any better. I want to leave you with this. After the motion to refer the case to the Privileges Committee failed, and members were walking out, this happened. It just shows you where the Liberals' priorities are. The Minister is seeking the call. I am, Mr Speaker. The member for Isaac just accused exiting ministers of taking a bribe. It is completely unacceptable. It is completely unparliamentary. And I ask the Minister to do the right shadow minister to approach the dispatch box and withdraw that.